tuning in. And today I am so happy to be speaking with Mawa McQueen, who is the owner of Mawa's Kitchen at the ABC in Aspen. It's right across from the Aspen Airport. And first of all, Mawa, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. Um, it's a pleasure. Mawa, I stumbled across your place a little too late. I wish I knew about it many, many years ago. So for other people that don't know about your hidden jewel, can you please describe your business? So I started off as a um, caterer and uh, now it's a restaurant and I still do catering and uh, we do cooking class. So I wanted a place that feel like home for me, you know, um, so I made it happen at the ABC. And can I ask you, what was your inspiration for the business? My inspiration, I wanted to, <clears throat> To have first of all more diversity and uh, healthier food. So, because you know, back in the day, I was full. I, you know, I was working at the little now when I started my business. So, we have we 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 have pretty good food. Yes. And then, and then every time I get out of work, I can't afford anything. <laughs> And, I, and I'm like, this is ridiculous. Can I have something fun and nutritious without all the fuss? It, it's either junk food or everybody's selling the same thing. Right. You know? So I, I, I'm like, you know what? I'm going to be different. I'm going to be true to myself um, as a person that has so many culture. You know, I live in three different continents, you know, um, Africa, France, um, Europe. And here, so, you know, I'm trying to combine all this, <clears throat> all the three culture in my cooking um, and, and show that there's more than quinoa, for example, you know, because when we get on a wagon with one thing, we just stay there and you're not right. moving, not experiencing anything. And, and I really wanted to bring a lot of culture, a lot of warmth and something different i wanted you see how the way when you when you come to mawa's kitchen you go through the kitchen so i want to see you because i'm making your food do you understand there's so much love that i put in my making what i'm doing it's not just a business that's why i'm still living in employer housing because <laughs> you know i'm trying to do everything cook everything and really focus on that oh can you hear me now I got you back. Okay. So that, that, that's why. <clears throat> well, I, I could tell you that I, I love your restaurant. I stumbled on it a little too late, um, but I'm so happy to have found it. And one of my favorite dishes I told you when I go there for their breakfast is, I think it's called Forneo. And as I explained to you a few minutes ago, I have a big background in nutrition as I work uh -huh. in hospitals and et cetera, uh -huh. and as an RD, registered dietitian. And I stumbled across your menu and I just, I was like, wow, <laughs> this could be one of my new favorites in town. And it probably mm -hmm. is. So can you talk a little bit about that Forneo that you, that dish you're telling me about? The oh, sorry. Uh, uh, <clears throat> sorry, I need to plug in my phone. <laughs> okay. Yes. It keeps yeah. it alive. It keeps it real. It's all fun. It's okay. <laughs> So it's funny enough, Fonio was, uh, it's a super grain from uh, West Africa. Um, and I remember growing up, I personally hated that. It's, it's usually, you know, we had it for breakfast with milk or sometimes they would do that. Um, you know, they do like a porridge and oh my God, it was so much sand in there. And I'm like, ah, and, um, and of course now it's, they, you know, the way they harvest it, the way they prepare it, it's so different that when I found it, I was like, oh my God, Chef Pierre Tiam from New York actually went to Africa and he decided, okay, you know what, I'm sick of that, uh, um, quinoa. Right. And go back to the original. This one, it's really good because it grows without that much water. It has so much property. It's naturally gluten-free and it's good for the environment and it's good for you. And I'm like, okay, I'm going to experience it. And I remember the first time I put it on the menu, I, you know, it, it's an education. 
because I'll, Aspen is so, you know, besides Asian food, nothing goes. So I decided to introduce more of me, more of my culture, more we go. And we, you, you're going to see even more later, you know, every year I'm trying to choose one ingredient that I focus on. And then the following, I, you know, it, it's fun and educational. You know, it's like you travel with me. Okay. Um, so that's how Fonio came about. And for me, I like Fonio better because I digest it better. It's more fine. Um, and, you know, the, you can do, make so many things with it. You know, so. And you said historically from Africa was considered yeah. a poor man's food. Was that what you said? Yes, before? Yeah. yes it is. And it still is. Oh, wow. It's still is. Because they want, if you have money, you're not going to eat for you. Because they don't know the value of the, you know, the health value of it. They rather eat burger, they rather eat all the nonsense from here, than eat funier. You know, because funier doesn't cost much. They don't see the nutrition value. Okay, because it's, so it's ingrained, it's a, it's a grain that hasn't been touched. You know, hasn't been genetically modified. Because nobody care about it. It's not like rice, <laughs> you know. Well, I'm so. happy that you introduced me to that because you yeah. do. I love that that porridge that you that you do in the morning. Um, Mala, how have you had a change due to COVID nineteen? How are you able to um, now service your customers? Or are you open for business? How can people feel safe uh, to coming to see you? Just a little bit about COVID nineteen in your business. Well, the great thing about our business is that we didn't have to make that much changes because, oh, you know, off the back, when you come to my kitchen, you know, we are wearing gloves, everything needs to be clean because just people are coming in. Yes, we restricted people to coming in and, you know, serve them from outside. Uh, but, you know, we clean, we sanitize. That's part of our daily routine. There's nothing new for us. In that department, maybe for other people who have a, a people who didn't have an open kitchen, you know. But for us, that's our daily routine. But nothing really changed on that. For the customer standpoint, yes, we we tell them to stay outside, uh, and you know we only did takeout or delivery. That's the the new thing that we you know introduce. Um, and then, um, yeah, that's about it. You know, I had to make a, my menu was already, you know, takeout friendly, you know, because it's not complicated, you know, your carrots going to taste like your carrots. So I didn't have to do that much <laughs> around things, really. Um, and then I created it just for my own sanity, because I like to create, you know, mm -hmm. that. I, I feel like that's the, the gift that God gave me and the way I express my, crea my creativity is through food. So I do daily spatial, I do, you know, weekly spatial, things like that so I can, you know, keep going. Um, for, for takeout, if people want to go ahead and pick something up, where do they find that menu? They find it online, mywaskitchen.com. All the menu are there, all the special are there, they can find it and I, I post, post at least once a day, you know, what we're cooking, what we're doing. So people are always aware of, you know, what are we are all about. Now, Mawa, you've been here, you said you opened the restaurant in 2006, is that correct? I opened the catering company in 2006. Okay. The restaurant uh, opened in 2010 mm -hmm. or 12, yeah. Yes. So, and have you had any, um, I loved your story about the, the grain, the super grain from Africa, but is there any particular memorable experience or story or something people don't know about the business that you think might be interesting to share? That's a good question. <laughs> I gave you choices. <laughs> so, so actually, you know, the, the way the restaurant came about, because let's face it, okay, things happen. 
the way the restaurant came about from from a catering to make a lip to you know have people sit down is that people were going to parties and um, they always say oh my god we can't get your food anywhere unless we are a millionaire or a second homeowner who can pay for for a private chef or catering why don't you do something that we all can enjoy and i remember my you know restaurant is so much work i always say if you want to make money don't be in a restaurant business <laughs> i've heard that okay. before. <laughs> uh, and uh, there's no glory you know i have so many scars i burn myself i chop my hip finger i mean there's no i mean people see you on tv and they think it's great They're like oh my god i can be a top chef and whatever but they don't know what's you know behind the scene it's more uh passion and uh, the the will to to share your knowledge share your your culture share uh what you think people should embrace and love you know um you know i come from a, a large family so i used to have when we started a restaurant we only had one long table because i wanted everybody to get together and to be together Okay, even now, when you come to my kitchen, you have to sit with other people. But of course, that's not going to happen anymore. <laughs> right, of course. One way we've had a change, at least for now. Yes. So I really wanted people to communicate, to be together, uh, and share a meal like we used to do in Africa. So my, my restaurant idea, it's now a fancy upscale where you know people don't even know their neighbor when you come here you're going to talk to the person next next to you you're going to see me i'm actually a real person who's cooking your food and you can say hey you know all that was part of my experience growing up you know um so yeah well i love your places it is like a hidden jewel like a cachet and um since you've lived in the valley do you have any other restaurants that you would recommend people go to or an activity that for people that uh, may be coming out from other states, maybe coming here this summer or this winter, an activity that you feel is like, if you're coming to Aspen, you got to do this, either an activity or another restaurant or something that you could share? Well, activity-wise, if you come here, you better have a good uh, I can choose because we have some <laughs> travel. It's a must. You know, I'm not a biker. Okay, I, I do have a bike, but I'm not a mountain biker. So there's so many things to do. I mean, you can horseback ride, you know, uh, but, you know, every day go for work and, you know, all the trail. You can be here for a month and haven't even done half of the trail between Aspen and Stone. You know, so there's so much to do. Uh, right of rafting, not me because I don't like that, <laughs> but right. a lot of people enjoy it. <laughs> no, it's a good recommendation, yeah. And, and then when it comes to restaurant, um, you know, my tastes are very simple and easy. So, for a fancy dinner, like for my wedding anniversary, I'll go to Cash Cash, for example. Good choice, okay. yes, and then uh, for casual. Dinner, I, uh, uh, I go to Ajax, and then uh, meat and cheese, and uh, occasionally like a nice burger at uh, White House Tavern. So this is a place that I just personally <laughs> like to go when I have time, when I have time, and <laughs> But there's, there's plenty other places that are wonderful. Okay, we have so many uh, restaurants here, so. Well, I want to tell you and who's ever watching this that um, I feel the love that you put into your food and your energy. I'm sure anybody that's watching this right now can see that. And, and I hope to actually come by and see you soon in person versus across from this screen here. And I want to thank you so much for taking the time and um, you are right over there at the ABC, and do you have any idea when they're going to be opening up for being able to sit outside? Well, they said that uh, probably on the 26th, so okay. I'm hoping because I'm ready because 
I mean, we have so many things going on. I have a crepe card outside. People can come and have a crepe now and uh you know and i also have every friday my zoom cooking class so people can cook with me it's free for the community uh and then we have a big patio it's just waiting six feet like <laughs> i know six feet um well i can't wait to come over there and see you i might check out that zoom interview uh, what I'll do is I'll post it in the written part of this uh, interview in the blog so people could see that. And um, thank you so much. Have a thank great you. day. Thank you for yeah. taking the time. It was a pleasure. <laughs> thank you.